There are so many different roles that can pivot into cybersecurity and working in a pharmacy is absolutely included. Now, whether you're a clerk, a farm tech, or all the way up at the top being the pharmacist, you can pivot into cybersecurity. Today, we're gonna to be talking with Brady McNulty about his experience and his journey going from pharmacist into the cybersecurity industry. We're gonna to talk to him about why he moved into cybersecurity from the pharmacy, what challenges he faced along the way, what skills he picked up in the pharmacy that transferred directly into cybersecurity, and the lessons learned that you can take advantage of when you go from pharmacy to cybersecurity. Let's get into it. All right, Brady, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So let's get into it. Why did you want to go from being a pharmacist into cybersecurity? Uh, you know, I'd already been looking into expanding my skill set as a pharmacist, just out of curiosity, trying to find something different I could do because I wanted to use my brain more, if that makes sense. I wanted to do something because pharmacy had been getting harder and harder at that point. And so I looked into a couple of local boot camps, but then when they emailed me back with the prices, I was like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, I started looking at a lot of the free trainings that were out there. But like I said, pharmacy was just getting harder and harder pre-COVID. You know, the companies to stay profitable were reducing staffing. And so we were doing more with less and then COVID hit and it just blew us out of the water. Uh, so all of a sudden we had a very frightened, very confused public and we had to do things like COVID testing, COVID shots all the time and educating the public, which is, uh, it's hard when, you know, things change hour by hour. And so pharmacy used to have this rhythm and tempo where it got really busy during flu season because we're doing all shots all the time. And then it got a little bit slower and we could expand our other programs. And now, like I said, it's all shots all the time. It's a permanent flu season. So, and we still have our other job to do, right? Which is making sure that people don't die from the medication that gets dispensed from the pharmacy. Right dose, right drug, right patient, the whole shebang, you know, that's got to fit in there somewhere. So, but long story short, I'd already kind of been looking into it. And then one day a guy came into our pharmacy and was like, I told him, hey, we don't have it ready. If you can give me five minutes, I'll get it ready. And he said, you know, I'm going to go home and get my gun and uh, I'll come back and see if it's ready. And so I went home that night and said, honey, I'm changing careers. <laughs> like it was, it was that quick. And she goes, yeah, sure. Okay. And so I bought the Mike Myers course for A plus. I bought the book and a couple weeks later I'd pass the exams and I, I bring it to her like a cat brings a dead bird. I'm like, look, look, I did the thing. She's like, yeah, no, it's, that's great. Make your change. And I was like, but I, I did it. She's like, yeah, I have full faith in you. Do it. You do you. And uh, so I've just been going nonstop ever since then. And it's been great. That's fantastic. I, I'm, it's horrifying about going, the person who said, go get a gun. But uh, to push that aside, I love the fact that you had a supportive partner who mm -hmm. uh, encouraged you along the way. I find that that uh, makes a world of difference if you have that close network supporting you, especially when you're making that transition, because it is a big lift initially to get up off the ground. So. What kind of challenges did you face as you started on this journey into cybersecurity? I would say the first big one was uh, analysis paralysis. And that's just a case of, I want to get into security, which as we all know, is a hugely broad sector to, to look into. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I appreciate it. For example, uh, I'm doing WGU's bachelor's in cybersecurity. And truthfully, it's just nice to have that stepping stone of, okay, I've got A+, plus, then we'll do network, then we'll do security and so on. Because what happens is in my free time, I'm like, let's do an Azure certification or let's do pen testing. <laughs> let's, let's try, try hack me. Well, what about hack the box? Well, what about over the wire? And it's just, it's so difficult at times to try to figure out, I guess that's the beauty of it is we enjoy all of this. And so it's just most efficient to try to focus on one thing, if you will. So that's been a challenge. This is my third career. Uh, I did nuclear power in the Navy. I did pharmacy for 15 years. And so what's a challenge being my age and being like, let's start over. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, because there's there's people who are 20 starting out that just they're able to absorb that much more information than I am right now. Or I might be competing with people my age who have decades of experience or a decade of experience on me. So those are some, I think, significant challenges. But by the same token, if you love the work, you love the work. It's not like I'm being forced to study something I hate. I mean, there might be times, but by and large, it's it's really good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, identify with you a hundred percent. There's a lot of opportunity. And if you have the passion for it, it's, it, it's, it's easy to find a lot of stuff you love, but you did point out one thing that I really want to highlight to uh, people watching this is that you know, there is so much cool stuff to do. So you do have to be deliberate about what you're going to do. What is your 
goal and what do you need to do to achieve that goal because there's a lot of distractions there's a lot of you know side roads and side paths or side quests if you want to take it to a gaming world that you can go down that won't take you to that main uh storyline so you got to be careful with that now with with your experience in the pharmacy brady what what type of transferable skills did you find were able to be a, directly applicable into a cybersecurity career well, one nice thing is becoming a pharmacist and uh, maintaining status as a pharmacist involves drinking from a fire hose often. And so I think that really prepared me for this adventure because, you know, in school, we might have taken six or seven different classes at a time across a variety of subjects. And you have to keep it all in your head. There's, It's not like, oh, I know cardiology this week, but next week it won't matter. Like you have to retain that information. And then you have to maintain your continuing education. So when everybody's telling me about uh, CPEs, for example, it just comes naturally. You're like, well, yeah, of course, I'm going to keep studying. I'm going to keep the information going. And, you know, especially like in my current job doing internal threat, there's so many different tools and it is intimidating on day one, but it's a learning process and you're just used to learning. You keep learning, you keep it going. So that's that's been pretty good. The other thing, too, is pharmacists are really good at uh, prioritizing and multitasking. I had a really good professor who called it taking care of the closest alligator to the boat. It's great if you're accomplishing your daily tasks over here, but if you have a priority one issue over here, but you've also got a, a threat actor over here, it's it's important to have those skills. And I think pharmacists are kind of uniquely suited as far as that, that stress management, kind of crisis management, if you will. And then also we've got all the soft skills. You know, we can talk to people of all backgrounds, all skill levels, all levels of understanding and just make it work. You know, we're, I, I feel like I'm a very approachable person. I feel like 99% of pharmacists are that level of a approachable because we we want to be and we need to be. I love it. And, you know, I know you do uh, threat intel or uh, insider threat type stuff, but I just want to point out too, if you're dealing with crisis and, and that's like you, you've almost conditioned to it, uh, blue team SecOps type work, that that's a great area of information security for people who have uh, basically acclimated to dealing with high stress situations so you don't get that mm -hmm. adrenaline dump you can actually focus on you know the compromise the threat actor where they are in the environment and and handle that uh, accordingly so i i love that uh brady so looking back if you could right if, if there's a pharmacist or a farm tech a clerk watching this right now and they're like oh my god i can i can step out of the pharmacy this is great what type of lessons learned did you pick up that you'd want to share with those individuals so that they could get to the goal faster? Uh, there's a couple of things. One is um, that it's okay to be happy. That's a strange statement to make, but in pharmacy, we get so locked into being in the box where you're in the box, you get the work done. And a lot of us are go, go, go. Every minute of every day is micromanaged uh, necessarily because we have to get the work done. We have to get the people taken care of. And at the end of the day, you're just stressed. And so a lot of, a lot of people in pharmacy are actually not that healthy because of the stress. So lessons learned, don't feel guilty about feeling happy because mm -hmm. I'm still fighting that right now. It's weird to be like, I love my job. And I love my job, just constantly learning, even outside of work, just doing that. But the other thing I would say too, is everyone I've met along the way has been so supportive. And so um, going to different conferences, like uh, did Hope in New York this year for the first time. Mm -hmm. We did a camp out, which was really cool. I told all my friends I was going to nerd camp. like, And it's so cool to sit around a campfire with a bunch of people I've never met and ask them every question I have about their job. And so that's where, um, Tools like LinkedIn are huge. I think that's actually where I found your your stream first was, you know, like, oh, Gerald owes your PhD. He seems like a cool guy. Oh, he's got a live stream. Oh, it's news, you know? But that's where you start making those connections and they're genuine connections. At ISC Squared, I got to sit next to somebody that she went to add me and we both looked at each other like, hey, hey. <laughs> so, but yeah, everyone's been super supportive. You know, I'm even trying to pay it forward. I've got two pharmacist friends who are now actively enrolled at WGU. I've got a good friend who was a coworker that he's doing a self-study course. And I have a friend who's a former Navy nuke and he's just going through certs right now too, because we've come to that point in our various roads that we've said we need to make that pivot. We need to make that adjustment, so. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And if you're looking for another, you know, area or opportunity for networking, because Brady mentioned how valuable it is, and I 100% I endorse that statement. Uh, the Simply Cyber Discord server is another great area. There's thousands of uh, members in there all of them either breaking in or in, and the vibe of that server is a supportive inclusion and helping people you know, answer their questions and have great conversations. So check out, uh, there's a link in the description below for that. 
Discord server. Brady, thank you so much for sharing your story, helping people move from the pharmacy into cybersecurity. I know this is going to help a lot of people. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm on LinkedIn. Don't hesitate. Add me. All right. I'll put a link in the description to your LinkedIn too then, Brady, if that's cool. cool.